This is Geometry Lesson 5-6, Auxiliary Figures and Uniqueness. We are going to discuss unique figures and auxiliary figures in this lesson. There will be a couple places where I say we'll, that we are going to skip over in the notes and we'll discuss it further in class. The proofs that are involved with the theorems that are listed in here are a little bit more complicated than I'd like to discuss in the video, and so I would like to do those in class. But to begin the video, we're going to talk about unique figures, and first we'll define it. It's the adjective unique means exactly one. When exactly one thing satisfies some conditions, some given conditions, we say the thing is uniquely determined. I have three examples here that will get at this concept. I want you to tell if each thing is uniquely determined. If not, why not? So let's take a look at number one. Given angle DEF, the bisector of angle DEF. So if I have an angle, if I have an angle DEF and I want to make a bisector, we know the bisector has to split the angle in half, exactly half. So there's only one place for that bisector to go through angle DEF in order to satisfy the, the statement. So that would mean that that would that it is uniquely determined. Let's take a look at number two. Given point A on line M. So let's make line M and point A on it. We want to see if point X on M a given distance from A. So if this is A and I want to put point X on it a certain distance from A. So say I said it was 10 units from A. I could put it over here, or I could put it over here. This would be 10, this would be 10. So that would mean it is not uniquely determined. This is yes. Let's take a look at the last one. Given a line N and point C on N, the perpendicular to N through C. So what that's trying to say is I have a line N and point C, and the perpendicular to N. So if I'm going to be perpendicular, that means I have to go through at 90 degrees. So there's only one place for that to happen. So that means that, yes, this is uniquely determined. We're going to skip over the unique th circle theorem and go directly to the auxiliary figure. That is a, line, a segment, line, or other figure that is added to a diagram. The word auxiliary means assisting or giving help. Let's try this example here. In triangle ABC below, a student wished to draw as an auxiliary line the perpendicular bisector of AC that passes through the vertex ang of angle B. The question is, is this always possible? Why or why not? So here you have a picture of a triangle and the perpendicular going through it. And in this case, it's not going through B. But let's answer the question, is it ever possible? I have a diagram here of a triangle. You can see here I have the perpendicular bisector going through AC. But I'm going to work with the vertex B and move it around and see if I can ever get it to land on my perpendicular bisector. And yes, it does. And as we progress through this course in Chapter 7, we'll actually come up with a theorem that talks about that when that vertex happens to be the perpendicular, be on the perpendicular bisector of the other segment. But for our purposes for this lesson, it, it is possible, but it won't always happen. The uniqueness of parallels theorem is the next concept I'd like to discuss in this video. I'm going to talk about it briefly and in class we will go through the proof for this theorem, but I'm not going to talk about it in the video. But look, the theorem says, through a point not on a line, so here's my line, and a point not on it, there, exactly, there is exactly one line parallel to the given line. So if I want to make a line parallel to the given line, we'll call it line L, they're saying that, and this, this theorem says that there's only one place for that to go through in order to be parallel. 
And then this assumption leads to a short proof on the triangle sum theorem. The triangle sum theorem is something you've seen before and we actually, actually used in some of the other lessons in this chapter. The theorem states the sum of the measures of angles of any triangle is 180 degrees. And we've been using that for, for several years. But let's use the uniqueness of parallels theorem and take a look at this theorem and actually prove it. So if we take our triangle ABC and we take vertex B and we, as a point, we want to make a line parallel to AC. So the uniqueness of parallels theorem says there's only one possibility, so that would be line ED. Now, since these two lines are parallel to each other, we can use a couple of theorems that we know. We know that this is going to equal angle A. Angle 1 is going to equal angle A due to the alternate, interiors, alternate interior angles theorem. And we know that angle C is going to equal angle 3 Then we have angle 2 here. We know that angle 1 plus angle 2 plus angle 3 has to equal 180 degrees because it's a straight angle and it, would for it forms a line and that is 180 degrees. So therefore, angle A plus angle C plus angle 2 would have to equal 180 degrees also. Now with the triangle sum theorem, we also have a couple other things that happen. A triangle can, cannot have more than one angle that is right or obtuse, and then triangles, because of this, triangles can be classified as obtuse, a triangle with one obtuse angle, right, which is a triangle with one right angle, or acute, a triangle with all three acute angles. The last piece to your notes in Lesson 5.5 five is just a list of 11 different situations in which your figure would be uniquely determined. We'll talk more about this in class and we'll spend some time working through some examples. So this concludes Lesson 5-6.